Welcome to Onward Software's Perfect Inspiration, Episode 1. My name is Brian Matias. Let's start with this shot that I took in January of 2012, and it was taken at Multnomah Falls along the Columbia River Gorge in Oregon. Now, Multnomah Falls is an area that I've visited many times in the past, and so shooting it was not something that was totally exciting for me. However, that's a mentality that you really don't want to ever have uh, as a photographer. We were going because uh, one of the people that was accompanying me was going for her first time. And every time that I had gone, uh, I used a wide angle lens to shoot uh, the falls because it's beautiful. There's a beautiful picturesque uh, pedestrian bridge and you see this massive waterfall with cascading water coming down. Now I thought, well, there's no reason why I shouldn't try something different. And so what I wanted to do is practice with compression. And what compression does is it gives you the illusion of bringing objects in your scene closer together. Uh, you get this more with telephoto zoom lenses as opposed to wider, length, wider angle lenses. So you can see that there's this boulder uh, with the cascading water and it actually looks like uh, they're pretty close together when actually there's a decent amount of distance uh, apart from them. Also, because I used a long lens, I was able to give the impression that this is at ground level when in actuality this boulder is on a platform that's well up in the air and not really accessible uh, from the ground. My primary goal here was to create a shot of a familiar place but give no one the idea that it's actually Multnomah Falls. I wanted to create a new scene from a place that I've been to many times and that's been photographed many many times by many photographers. So you can see if we go to the metadata information here we have the focal length at 130 millimeters using my Canon 70 to 200 2.8 uh, LIS lens with my Canon 5D Mark II. And I closed the aperture down to f32 because I wanted to get uh, the slowest possible shutter speed. Uh, I wanted to kind of glass out the cascading water, but I didn't want to expose long enough that we lost all definition. You can still see some of that waterfall definition here, which is important to me. The only problem is that at f32, you're going to see every single dust spot that's on your lens and on your sensor. So that's not a problem. We can clean that up after the fact. Another problem is that from all the spray and the light reflecting off of the spray, we have a flat looking image. It looks very hazy. And so the first thing I'm going to want to do is get rid of that or cut through it. So let's go ahead and send this image to the perfect photo suite uh, from Lightroom 4 by going to File, Plugin Extras, and selecting perfect photo suite. Now the first thing I'm going to do is use the refine brush or the retouch brush and get rid of these dust spots. I'm not going to go crazy because through processing I typically bring out even more dust spots but it doesn't hurt to get a head start. Get this one right here and from there now I'm going to send the image to perfect effects by clicking on effects from the module selector. Now that we're in perfect effects, I had mentioned that the first thing I want to do is cut through the haze from the spray. I'm going to do that by first closing my effect bar. This will give me more screen real estate. And then make sure that uh, you select the advanced tab up here on the top right, which will bring up the effect options. With that done, I'm going to select the tone enhancer. Right away, you're going to see an improvement. It cuts through a lot of that haze, but I'm going to bring that black level down to about 9%. Next, I'm going to bring up the local contrast, and that's what's going to give me that texture or tooth in the image. You can see how we brought out texture in this boulder here, which is going to be my anchor or focal point for the scene. This is where I want the eye to rest at. I'll continue adjusting these sliders by dropping brightness, boosting contrast, and further refining the look of the image. Now you can see how I'm treating these sliders like a pulley system. I'm going to bring up the highlight recovery a bit to drop down the highlight and bring the brightness down a bit more. So if we turn off that layer, you can see the huge improvement that we were able to achieve just with one effect. One of the byproducts of in introducing local contrast is you will start to see some more dust spots. That's not a problem. We'll be able to attack those when we return back to perfect layers. Now that we've got this kind of base here and we've cut through the haze, I want to click on Add to add a new effect. I want to bring up my effects bar and then under the photo filters category, I'm going to select the first effect called ADA Cooling. I'll hide the effect bar again, 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the strength up just a bit because I really want to bring the blue out in the background. Um, but I also want to remove that effect from the bol this boulder here. I, I want the boulder to be sans blue effect. So by using the masking brush, I'm just going to go ahead here and I'm going to mask it out. Now, I can also bring up the inspector and show the mask as an overlay so I can see where I'm masking. And sure enough, I've missed some areas. This is an important practice that you want to get used to. Uh, is to bring up the overlay mask. There's a cool shortcut to bring the mask up right away. On a Mac, the shortcut is Command-M, and on a PC, the shortcut is Control-M. So if I toggle on and off, it's just an easy way to bring that up. So you can see I'm trying to take good care about masking to the very edge, but I'm not going to go crazy overboard. I'll just bring the mask up one more time, just get some of these areas here, and then we'll move on. All right, the next thing that I want to do is bring out the greens from the lichen here in the moss. So I'm going to click on Add. I'm going to bring up the effect bar one more time. And under the same photo filter category, there is an effect here called Green Enhancer. I'm going to select that, hide the effect bar. And now I'm going to play around here. I'll bring the lightness up of the green. I like this, the settings here already for the saturation and the hue. It really brings it out. Uh, and I'm really happy with that. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click Add and go to the Effect Bar and select the Glow category. In Glow, I'm going to select Deep Forest, which will give this image that ethereal feel, that kind of otherworldly, magical feel. Except at 100%, it just doesn't look very good. So I'm going to drop the strength down to zero and then bring it up slowly to about 40%. So now we've got a really look, a good looking image here. This is looking really fantastic. There's a great shortcut in Perfect Effects to toggle the entire image preview on and off. On a Mac, it's Command-P, and on a PC, it's Control-P. So if I toggle, you can see this is what we started with. I mean, it's a pretty impressive change with just a few effects that we creatively applied. When you're done stylizing, you can click Apply, and we'll bring back to Perfect Layers. Now that we're here, I'm going to go ahead and take my Retouch Brush and again just kind of select some of those dust spots. I'm just going on the hunt here and trying to find uh, any last dust spots that came out through uh, applying the Tone Enhancer. And it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to click on Save and return back to Lightroom. Now that we're back in Lightroom, you can see that we've got our original image over here and then the edit image with perfect effects. But we're not done yet. I want to create a shallow depth of field and render these rocks a little bit more out of focus. Now I can bring it straight to focal point, but for the time being, I'm going to actually send it to Photoshop, and I'll show you why. To bring the image into Photoshop, just go to Photo, Edit In, and select Adobe Photoshop CS5, or whatever version you have installed. Now you may be wondering why I want to send the image to Photoshop first before going to focal point. And the reason is that I want to use selections to control what's going to be applied in focal point and what won't be touched. To illustrate, I'm going to select my Quick Select brush, and I'm going to start selecting the boulder in the foreground, along with the foreground here on the left. You can see that the brush has a plus on the inside, which means that as I draw, it'll add to my selection. However, I want to remove. To remove, I'm going to press the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, and the plus will turn to a minus. This gives me the opportunity now to remove areas from the selection that I don't want. So I'm just selecting this rock and then that area here on the right of the scene. The rest of the image is good. I'm happy with that. Now, if I were to send this image to focal point right now, it would work on whatever selected in the active document. So in this case, it would only blur the foreground, which is the exact opposite of what I want. To make sure that it works on everything but the foreground, I'm going to go to the Select menu and select Inverse. Now it essentially will work on everything except for the foreground. The foreground will always be protected and sharp. One last thing that I typically do when I need to do selections and work with focal point is I want to save the selection as an alpha channel. To do that, go to the Channels palette and then click on the New Channel button at the bottom. You can see here that we have our alpha channel selected. So in the event that you deselect uh, or you come back to the image later on, if you want to load that selection, just hover over the thumbnail of the alpha channel, press the Command or Control key, and click. And that will load your selection. 
One last thing that I always like to do as well is go to File and then Save just to get a saved document. With the selection made, I'm going to go to File, Automate, and select Focal Point. In Focal Point, you could see the benefit already of using a selection. I have my focus bug here, but even if I put it on the boulder, which normally should be rendered out of focus, because we're selecting everything but the boulder in the foreground, it's always going to be protected. So here's what this leaves me the ability to do. I'm going to change the shape of my bug from round to planar, and I'm going to make it horizontal. Next, I'm going to put that down towards the foreground, and you can see that we're getting a better blend. I'm also going to tilt the plane of focus towards the background by putting the cursor inside the body of the bug and pressing the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on a PC and dragging upward. This is going to return some definition to the background. Now, this is totally unrealistic. That's way too much blur in the background. So focal point is best used in small doses. And what I mean by that is I'm dropping the amount of blur significantly to about 9%. I'm not in it to hit you over the head with the blur. I just want to give you the semblance of a shallow plane of focus. And now to further draw the eye to the boulder here on the bottom right, I'm going to drop the brightness of that background and boost the contrast. As I do that, the foreground, especially the boulder here, really pops out. When I'm done, I'll click Apply to return the image back to Photoshop on its own layer. Now that we're in Photoshop, you can see that focal point was only applied to the selection that we have here and I'm free to save it and return back to Lightroom to apply finishing touches. Now that we're back in Lightroom, let's take a look at the evolution of our image. You can see the image that we started with. It's very hazy and just very flat looking. We were able to cut through that haze and give the stylization that we wanted using perfect effects. And then Focal Point allows us to give us a nice shallow depth of field to further bring the eye to this boulder. The last thing that I would do here is I'm going to bring an adjustment brush up and I want to build a custom clarity brush. I'm going to drop the clarity down. That's going to add a little bit more texture to that boulder, except one of the nicest features uh, or additions to Lightroom 4's, especially in its adjustment brush, is the custom temperature or the white balance control using an adjustment brush. What this means is I can apply a slightly warmer white balance in addition to adding clarity while I paint here on the rock. What this does is, first, it brings out texture, but secondly, it allows me to contrast the cool tone of the image with the warm tone of the boulder here in the foreground, which is really fantastic. The last thing I might do is close the adjustment brush and then scroll down to apply a slight vignette. I'm going to drop that amount down, drop the midpoint down, and bring up the highlights to preserve the highlight details along the edges. Thank you very much.